Hello, I'm Tracy Pierce. Thanks for joining me for this mini and these free mini animal communication sessions that I'm doing throughout the coronavirus pandemic. My, my animal friends really were pinging me. They're like, we really need for you to do something to help the animals spread what we're seeing, what we're experiencing to the world. And so I've just set up these little animal communication sessions and I've had plenty of volunteers come forward. So today who we're gonna be talking with is Kimbo. Let me share his picture with you here. All right, there we go. This is Kimbo. He's a very special kitty. I've talked to Kimbo a couple times before, and the most recent time we talked, that, um, there used to be another cat that lived with Kimbo, and he passed away, I, th I think it was in January. So the last time I, I talked with Kimbo's family, we didn't talk with him quite as much. So today we're really gonna uh, get Kimbo's perspective on what's happening in the world, and um, I do actually have Kimbo's kitty friend who passed away in January. I've got his picture here. His name is Wamba. And if he happens to come through, then I'll pull his picture up and we'll let him chat. But we might have to do another session with Wamba because he's, he's a very, very special kitty too. So I'm going to go ahead and just get quiet and start tuning into Kimbo. For those of you who are watching live either on Facebook or here on Zoom, if you have questions uh, on the Zoom chat box, if you look at the bottom bar, it says chat and you can click on that. And if you have questions, you can type them in. Or if you're watching on Facebook, you can type it into the comments section. All right, so I'm just start tuning into Kimbo. And I feel this just incredible softness that comes forward initially when I tune into Kimbo. I can almost see the color of pink in his energy kind of flowing through. There's very much this kind of Venusian, uh, almost feminine quality to him. And he is a male cat, but He's really showing me this feminine quality that he's been working with lately. So Kimbo, you kind of have an open forum here and whatever you'd like to share with us or your humans who are on the line with us, um, the floor is kind of yours. He says he's really been enjoying this kind of quarantine or lockdown time. It's given him a lot more time with his humans. He's showing their, he is showing this softness kind of spreading throughout their house. It's what I'm really holding for them during this time, this softness, this being gentle with yourself, being gentle with each other. This is not a time for harshness, Kimbo says. It, it, yeah, it's like he's showing me two separate sections of people almost. It's like, so you've got this group of people that really wants to like push, let's do stuff. Man, we've got all this open time, let's get stuff done. But then there's this other section of people that are just kind of surrendering into it and letting their energy kind of, it's almost like their energy is falling back, but not, not in a negative way. Like, it, yeah, it feels like a sigh kind of in my energy, like, ah. This is an opportunity for deep rest that a lot of people have been asking for. He really sees the people in his household embracing this and moving in a slower way and allowing, yeah, it really feels like this 
feminine Venusian, maybe even kind of moony energy that's spreading throughout the house. And he really wants to hold that. He feels like his humans have been doing an amazing job kind of letting themselves fall into this more feminine place. Um, he's, uh, I don't know if you guys have read this book. He's, he's showing me this book. I've read it a few times. It's called The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. And he's like, this is an opportunity, yes, to really surrender into the circumstances and pushing on anything around this, this virus or this lockdown time is not gonna get you where you wanna go, is what Kimbo says. It is more about relaxing, relaxing into the chaos, allowing yourself to be in the chaos of all of this without being wound up. And like he shows this straight, rigid pole with like stuff wrapped around it. He's like, that is not the way you wanna be. You don't wanna be rigid like that trying to push on things. It is really about letting go and surrendering. Thank you, Kimbo. All right, it looks like we have a question here. So Kim's asking, oh, Kimbo, she says, you're super cute. It seems that in her experience, there's something really special about black and white tuxedo kitties. Is there anything you can share about unique qualities related to this or other types of cats, Kimbo? <clears throat> yeah, so Kimbo's showing me um, other tuxedo kitties that I have personally known. And he's like, well, what do you think, Tracy? They've been pretty special, huh? <laughs> like, yeah, there's, there's one in particular he's showing me that I didn't know this cat very well, but he, he lived next door to me. He was very... Um, special. He was a black and white tuxedo kitty. Is there anything um, anything special about tuxedo kitties that you feel, Kimbo? There's this something about, uh, I keep hearing the word formality, um, Kimbo, could you, I'm not sure I'm understanding what you're showing. Could you show me again? He's showing, well, yeah, when we, when we come in, there is some part of us that gets to choose what we, what we look like. Uh, he's showing me some of the other kitties that I have had in the past and you know, some of them were very visually striking for one reason or another. He's showing me I had, I had a Maine Coon kitty and then I had a white kitty. Who, she was very striking. And he's saying it's, it's not like tuxedo kitties represent this and then calico kitties represent that. It's more has to do with whatever our particular mission is, uh, like what in how we look is going to catch the attention of the person that we're trying to connect with. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's showing, he's showing like one of the, the cats that I, that I had, she was a Maine Coon cat. She was very, very beautiful. And she was very little when um, we got her and so she didn't have all that long hair. And what he's showing is like, if she would have had all that long hair when she was that little, there's no way that you, Tracy, would have adopted a long haired cat. There's no way you would ever adopted a long haired cat. So even in that, when she was little, she knew she was gonna find you, but she wasn't gonna reveal to you that she had this really long hair because that would have been something that would have put you off. He says, so we are aware of what our physical appearance looks like and how that might be interpreted by our humans. So there is some awareness with the bodies that we pick and how it might help us to connect in the right way with our human or more quickly. Well, thank you, Kimbo. Checking for any other questions. All right, Kimbo, so 
the floor is yours. What else would you like to share with us? Is there anything about what's happening with you or? I feel, um, I feel I'm kind of pointing towards Wamba, not to talk to him, but just that uh, he's saying, I do miss him. I miss his presence. He's showing that he really held a special place in the house. He feels like, he, Kimbo says, I feel like I've done a really good job taking over now that I'm the only kitty. And I do still feel his presence. It's almost, what he's saying is, um, this, uh, Isabel, this will, this will make sense to you guys. It might not make sense to the other people, but um, what he's showing is the, the command know that energy center in your apartment, in your house, that Wamba is very, very woven into that command node. And Kimbo's really been working with that energy. He feels like Wamba did something pretty special in how he wove his energy into your command node. And it's really helped him to hold the space. Um, yeah, wow, that's really cool, Kimbo. He's saying something he feels like has even softened a little bit more in his own energy since Wamba passed away. Yeah, that kind of, you know, towards the end, there was a lot of, of sadness in the house and he felt like maybe there was a little bit of contracting of the energy in the house. And then when Wamba left, it was like, poof, there was this big opening and yeah, he's showing it kind of as this explosion of light in your house that happened when he passed. And ooh, wow, I'm getting goosebumps. Um, Kimbo, that's thank you for sharing that with us. Oh yeah, okay. So Isabel is saying, uh, yeah, Kimbo is more talkative. He's taking his place now that he there's more space for him. Yeah, Kimbo's, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's how it feels. It like um, Wamba's, Wamba's leaving created more space for him. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Some, uh, Kimbo, I feel like he's kind of reading me and sometimes cat, or cats do it a lot. Sometimes other animals do it too. But when I'm doing a reading with an animal, sometimes they'll show me a lot of pictures about my own situation to kind of help so it's like they're reading me and then I'm reading them so it's kind of an interesting little feedback loop because what Kimbo is showing me is um, about 10 years ago I had two cats and one of them was I mean she was my favorite you know even though we try not to have favorites sometimes we have those and when the one who was my favorite passed away then the other cat really stepped up and her personality started to shine a lot. And Kimbo is showing, this is really kind of a similar thing for me. I'm getting to do that now. And he's showing himself like rubbing his head against his humans. And um, I'm even a little bit more affectionate than I used to be in the past, Kimbo says. Yeah, and he's, he's, really, he's really pointing towards this other cat and how even from, you know, even though this other cat is not in the physical world anymore, he's still very much energetically holding something for this household. Okay, so I'm checking the chat again, see if we have any other questions for Kimbo. Kimbo, I, your energy just feels so like soft and juicy. I feel like I could just hang out in, in your energy for this rest of the time here, but I wonder what else you might like to share with us. Oh, he points, he's like, look at the chat. Somebody just sent a, pit, uh, a question. Do pets choose that they will be together? So I think what that means is like, did you and Wamba 
decide that you were going to be buddies together in this? He shows me like with him and Wamba that like they knew each other above beforehand, like they knew each other in the spiritual world before they came together. Yeah, and that, that was kind of our plan was to work together with, with these people. We weren't quite sure how it was all gonna um, work out, but yeah, Kimbo, Kimbo says that him and Wamba definitely had decided beforehand that they wanted to work together. And Kimbo's saying that, so he's showing like these clusters of, it feels like animal souls maybe, like, oh, here's a group and then here's a group. And that a lot of these kind of animal soul groups will often work together uh, with humans in certain ways. Like, again, he's showing me some of the other kitties that I've known who have come in like as pairs. And the, yeah, they very consciously did come in to work with you guys together. Is that always the case, Kimbo, or are there sometimes these accidents where, you know, animals come together and they suddenly realize they can work together or, or is it all pre-planned? Oh, it's definitely not all pre-planned, he says. Sometimes it's more like we just have an idea that we need to work together and there's this general kind of idea of like, okay, we need to work with these people with this thing. And, you know, we don't know all the actions or how it's going to unfold, but we know that together we're going to work on this thing together. So, yeah, it's not all pre-planned. There, there is sort of more of like, he shows it as this packed thing, like this package of ideas or thoughts and like how it actually manifests and how it unpacks when we're down here on earth looks very different from when we're in the spiritual world necessarily. Um, things just look different on earth than they do from the spiritual world. And so we have to remember that. And he's saying, yes, there are animals who come together, like, as you're saying, by accident and then decide, oh, wow, we really do have a connection to be able to work together. He is saying that there are certain animal souls, though that there's more propensity or more magnet, uh, magnetizing effect, like they draw each other together, like, oh, we're both working on helping develop third eye intuition. So like two cats that know a lot about third eye intuition might come together. Um, or sometimes he's saying, okay, so this, this one animal, maybe this dog really wants to work with you on your third eye, but then this other cat really wants to work on your heart. Like it doesn't always, it doesn't always um, fit together the way somebody might think. And it's kind of hard to deconstruct it and really give all of the, the details because it is so complicated and packed up uh, in some ways that it's almost like human words don't really express the level to which we're, we're planning and working on a more transformed or transmuted higher kind of vision place. Okay, thank you. So I see we're getting kind of close to the end of our time. Just checking if anybody else has questions they would like to ask Kimbo. So go ahead and type them into the chat or to the comments. Okay. All right. Well, Kimbo, is there any, are there any final words that you want to, to share with people, let our viewers know? He really wants people to remember the, their softness. Um, and he shows like, um, like little kids, maybe five, six years old, you know how they can feel, feel very soft, but they're also very like, he shows like tickling them, like they're bubbly, like, hee -hee -hee. like there's this kid energy that comes up 
So there's this curious kid energy and the softness that he would really like for people to tune into and embrace, especially if they're having any kind of a hard time dealing with the pandemic to really get in touch with this maybe inner child, softer part of themselves. Thank you so much, Kimbo. Thanks for talking with us today. All right. So thanks to all of you who joined me here live. It's been really fun to do these sessions. And since, you know, here in the US, it looks like we're gonna be locked down till the end of April. It's my plan to keep doing these at least through the end of April. So if you have a little animal friend or a big animal friend who would be interested to share their wisdom with the world, please feel free to send me a message either through my website or Facebook, Instagram, wherever you might be seeing this posted. Or um, yeah, just send me a message with your, your pet's picture, age and name, and we'll see if we can't get them into the queue for that. All right, so thanks so much for joining me here today. And until next time, take care and be well.